somewhere along the line, someone had realised that if all the stars brought stars, tarts and hangers-on and all the stuff, there could be like 3,000 people backstage, and it was impossible. And so the arrival and departure of these people throughout the entire day had to be staged and staggered. And so a helicopter airlift was created. And I think it was probably one of the biggest civil helicopter airlifts that there's ever been. Now, we had used this site once before at Wembley, which was um, owned by the um, London Transport uh, Authority, you know, the underground people. And there was a cricket field. And one end of the cricket field, there's a sports, sort of sports pavilion. So we went along and said, could we use it on the 13th of July? Now, there was a big problem here because they had a major championship cricket match, which they wanted to play out. At that particular time, I think they wouldn't move it, and that was it. I mean, you could get you could get U2, you could get Elton John, you could get Wembley, and you could get 50 helicopters. But, I don't know, Middlesex County Cricket, or whoever, whoever it was, would not move the bowels. And so we had this bizarre thing that some of the biggest names in the world flying in in these multi-million pound helicopters were seeing cricketers scurrying everywhere as the umpire blew a whistle. <laughs> And I remember this poor old bugger lifting the bales off and, and you used to see him go off into the hut and wait until the helicopter's gone. You know, that those bales were up and down, up and down, up and down. By the end of the day, they were letting the chopper get about three feet off the ground before they started resuming bowling. Or It was just, I mean, it could only be in Britain where a cricket game was still going to continue regardless of what was going on around them.